This is BBC News. I'm Ben Brown. The headlines at midday. Theresa May insists she won't make compromises on her Brexit checkers plan that are not in the national interest. The Shadow Chancellor says the Labour Party will reach an agreement to tackle concerns over anti-Semitism. We will protect Jewish members of our party from any form of abuse and anti-Semitism and we will take action as well. And that's what's happening. Hundreds of prison staff have been caught smuggling drugs, weapons and mobile phones into prisons. So sorry. Bono loses his voice on stage and you two are forced to abandon last night's concert in Berlin. And also coming up for you in half an hour's time, the Click team will be looking at new technology in home security. Well, let's begin this bulletin by bringing you more on that continuing row over anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. We can take you straight to North West London now. That's where the former Labour Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, is speaking at a conference held by the Jewish Labour Movement. The amazing work done by the Holocaust Education Trust. And it is one of the great achievements that even when there were spending cuts and even when there were economies having to be made, we sustained and would continue to sustain the support for the Holocaust Education Trust. And I remember, too, in 2010, Harriet Harman piloting through the Equality Act, not just to prevent discrimination, but to positively advance the cause of equality in race and religion in our country. And yes, I remember, too, and it should be acknowledged, Jeremy Corbyn and Diane Abbott and, uh, uh, and uh, Yvette Cooper and David Lammy taking up the fight against the racism practiced against the Windrush generation. And you know, there is a common theme, a common theme in our history, to stand up against discrimination and intolerance and prejudice and racism and anti-Semitism, a common theme wherever it is to be found, whenever it is to be found, from whatever source it comes and by whatever person or whatever agency it happens. And we mean that when we say any and every discrimination, any and every bigotry, any and every bullying, any and every prejudice, because that matters to the Labour Party. It is not if, it is not but, it is not conditions, it is not this one or that one. It is every form of discrimination, and that should be the theme of everything we do. And there's a good reason why. And there's a good reason why, because if you ever allow racism against any section of our society to take root, then your whole society is put in danger. Violate the rights of one group, and you put at risk and diminish the rights of all. If you allow one inequality and one discrimination to happen, then you are affecting the future of your whole society. And that's why we say that an injury to one is an injury to all, and an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And that's what we mean when we say we have two principles, equality, that everyone should be treated with dignity and respect, and solidarity, that we should come to the aid of those in most need, not because it is immediately necessarily in our direct interest, although it's in our long-term interest, but in the interests of justice as a whole. And that's what the Labour Party is all about, or should be all about. By a father who visited Israel almost once a year for 30 years. He was a church leader, and he visited all the places and towns and cities of Israel. And before I ever visited Israel, which I've done many times to my great enjoyment in recent years, I grew up on the slides that he had, the presentations, the postcards, as he told the story of the foundation of Israel as I was growing up in a town far away in Scotland in the 1950s and 60s. And I learned at first hand of the depths of depravity that happened as a result of the horrors of the Holocaust. 
I learned at first hand from him about the horrors that were visited on people from the youngest to the oldest members of the community and the plan to exterminate a whole race. And you know, the Labour Party at that time learned that lesson too and knew about what was happening from the stories that we were told by the Jewish labor movement and by the survivors of the Holocaust. And it's very clear that we made a promise to the Jewish community and we must honor it. Our promise was that you will never walk alone and we will never walk by on the other side. That is a promise I repeat today. We will not neglect you, we will not forget you, we will not desert you. If your voice is ever silenced or is never able to get through, we will lend you our voice. Because we know that just as your freedoms depend on all of us, the quality of our freedoms depend on yours. And yes, the Labour Party, often the last line of defense for people facing persecution and discrimination. And you know, we must never allow the last line of defense to become the first point of attack. We must never allow ourselves to be in a position where we are not the problem rather than the answer to the problem in the future. So I want to say to you very clearly today that the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of Semitism is something that we should support unanimously, unequivocally, and immediately. I I understand the background. The task force formed 20 years ago. The consultation that took place to draw up the definition. The 31 countries that are involved. The dozens of other countries that are signing it. The dozens of cities and councils that want to be part of it. The virtual unanimity of all these people about what constitutes their definition of anti-Semitism and it has been brought together for one reason and one reason only, as the document itself says, to advance and to support education and remembrance of the Holocaust. I've read the document and it's absolutely clear and people are not telling the truth when they say something else. The document says specifically in its first paragraph that criticism of Israel is not to be taken as anti-Semitism. It says specifically, <laughs> that you can, you can criticize the government, you can support the Palestinian cause for a two-state solution, but you must never allow the discrimination and prejudice that is part of the definition's desire uh, to remove. And I've read it also because it says very clearly, it's not a foreign policy document, it's not got some plan for the Middle East, it's about dealing it's about dealing with this one thing and one thing only, anti-Semitism, which it is defined as hatred of the Jews. And you know this? We have to be vigilant because this is not an abstract document. This is not a document of philosophy only. This is a document about ever-present realities on our doorsteps and in our streets and in our cities. And we must act on this document to prevent these things happening. And you know, I, looked at, I look at the figures. Anti-Semitic incidents in our synagogues or near our synagogues have doubled over the last four years. Anti-Semitic attacks overall have nearly trebled over these last four years. Anti-Semitic attacks on schools or near to schools on young people, tragic, quadrupled in these last few years. And of course, anti-Semitic taxes, Luciana can testify on the internet and the media, anonymous voices pouring out poison and hatred against uh, the Jewish community, a 2,000% rise since 2010. And so this is not a theoretical or an abstract problem that we're dealing with. This is a problem that is real, 
and present and something that has got to be dealt with now. And I have to say to all of us who are socialists, we stand on the principles of equality and we stand on the principles of solidarity. When we say we support solidarity, are we saying we support solidarity only with some groups in our community? Or should we not be saying, as I say, we have solidarity with all groups that are under pressure in our community? When we talk about the principles of equality, are we simply talking about equality for some? Or are we talking as we should about equality of treatment for every single group in our community? Because that's how it should be. And if we cannot, as a movement, stand up with one voice and say we will have show solidarity with the Jewish community facing these attacks, facing these intimidations, facing this racism, facing this discrimination, then we are not the Labour Party that we aspire to be. And so I take to this, this is not simply, this is not simply about changing a policy. It's not just about a procedure. It's about who we are. It's about what we stand for. It's about what makes us take. It's about the soul of the Labour Party. Yeah, yeah. I, believe, I believe our party is the party of conscience. But our conscience means that we cannot stand up simply for some of the rights of some of the people, some of the time. We have got to stand up with one voice unanimously for all the rights of all the people of this country facing repression all of the time. So I'm very clear, not only must we unanimously agree this definition of anti-Semitism, we must take the proper procedures in line to discipline those who undermine them. Yeah. Equal, equal at the same time, we must, we must be honest with ourselves and recognize that racism and anti-Semitism, yes, it's a problem of the jackbooted Nazi right in our country, but it's also a problem of the conspiracy theory left. And that is why we need proper political education so that our movement is cleansed of anti-Semitism and racism in the future. And yes, if we can make progress on these things, we should say as a government, as I believe, uh, we should create an office to combat and to monitor anti-Semitism both nationally and internationally, doing more than the present post-Holocaust envoy does and learning from what President Obama did in the States. And we should honor the recommendation of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission in 2016. It said that this country still needs a comprehensive strategy that a Labour government should implement against anti-Semitism and racism in all its respects, in schools, in colleges, in the workplace and elsewhere. And that's what the next Labour government should now be committing itself to do. And this policy cannot be half-hearted, it cannot be hesitant, it cannot be carping, it cannot be grudging, it cannot be negative. We cannot just move on. We have got to move forward, true to our values, true to our principles of equality and solidarity and in respect of the wishes of the Jewish community. So I say it is time to say that this wrong must and can be righted. This injustice has got to be remedied. This stain has got to be removed. This sore that exists and the harm that has been done and the hurt that it has caused has got to be undone and it's got to be undone immediately and it's got to be undone and seen to be undone in the next few days. You know, I've you know, I've looked at all the arguments that people have put for not agreeing with the definition that has come from the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Some say, oh, of course, it's a diversion, it's a, it's a distraction from the real issues which is fighting economic and social injustice. I tell you, fighting racism is not in competition with our values. It's the very foundation of our values. <laughs> And then some say, and then some say, oh, but yes, but surely, 
you should have the power to amend and you should take the sections you like and delete the sections you don't like. And I say uh, this. Listen to the people who have experienced and who've suffered the persecution. Listen to the people who've experienced and suffered the discrimination. Would you produce, as any party, a document on sexism and sexual violence produced by men without consulting the women of the party about what they really feel and getting their advice? Would you, would you produce a document on racism without consulting the black community? Would you produce a document on homophobia without fully consulting the LGB community? No. The Labour Party has a duty to listen to the voices of those people who know. And you know, there's one reason why this document that was put before the National Executive should be accepted in full and unconditionally. Look at the countries that have come together to support it. Look at the unanimity that has been achieved. There is not one Jewish definition of anti-Semitism and a non-Jewish definition. There's not one North and South definition and a East and West definition. There's not one left definition and a right definition. The great strength of the definition of anti-Semitism in this document is the unanimity behind it. The unanimity behind it is its strength. Amend it. Change it. Delete sections. Rip it up in parts. And you will destroy the unity that is essential if we are to fight anti-Semitism in every country of the world. And that's why it's the same. And you know, and then some people... And then, some, and then some people say to me, ah, but we are prevented uh, from supporting the Palestinians and crit criticizing uh, Israel. And I look at the document, and it's pretty clear that criticism of Israel is not to be taken as anti-Semitism. But you know, I've always supported the creation of Israel. For hundreds of years, a nation that never, that had a history but never had a home. For hundreds of years, traveling the world, facing pogroms and persecution, and no place to call home, and no place to be secure. So yes, I've always supported and will support the creation of Israel. But you know, when I went to the Knesset in Israel, the first British Prime Minister, and I was proud to be so, to address the Knesset, I was able also to tell them, and I did tell them, that we supported a two-state solution. We supported Jerusalem as being the capital of three religions. We supported the settlements being withdrawn. We supported restitution for refugees. And even yesterday, as my position as UN envoy for global education, I have spoken out against what has happened to the 500,000 Palestinian children who are in desperate need of education for whom President Trump has withdrawn after 70 years of American support the finance that is something that is completely wrong. But as you know, it's possible to support